hello and welcome to Diecast Restos. My name is Jason and this is Lesney's Matchbox 19C Aston Martin DBR5. It featured in the range from 1962 to 1965. It's one of a very small number of models from the Matchbox range to have no casting variations or paint variations. All were painted metallic green and had a black base plate. They all had a plastic driver coloured either grey or white with a cast metal steering wheel. The drivers didn't come out of the factory headless mind. This was also one of the earliest models to have no silver trim applied. Here's how a Mint 19C DBR5 looks. And this is an image of a real DBR4, similar to the 5, but I shall delve further into this now. The DBR5 was designed to compete in Formula 1 for the 1960 season. Its predecessor was the DBR4, with which Aston Martin had hoped would bring them the World Championship in 1959. The DBR4 had started life in 1956 as a prototype open wheel racer. Aston Martin hoped to build on their road and sports car successes during the 1950s. The DBR4 was subsequently designed around the DB3S sports car that debuted in 1953, albeit as a tighter, more confined package as the DBR4. However, the DBR4 suffered poor aerodynamics owing to a vertical windscreen and an external air intake on the side of the body. This, teamed with a reduced capacity version of Aston's 3.7 litre straight six engine, down to 2.5 litres, ultimately created a heavy, sluggish and unreliable race car. Besides this, the car was already out of date compared to its contemporaries by the time it was entered into the 1959 F1 World Championship. Four DBR4s were built between 1957 and 1959, as it made its competitive debut in May 1959 at a non-championship race at Silverstone. The car performed well at the hands of works drivers Roy Salvadori and one Carol Shelby. Shelby finished sixth, suffering oil pump failure two laps from the finish, while Salvadori took second. However, their debut flattered to deceive, as the team made their championship debut at the Dutch Grand Prix later that month. Both cars suffered engine failure in the early laps of the race. The DBR4 was entered into just three more championship races, where it failed to score any points. Sixth place was Aston Martin's best result. Recognising their failures, Aston Martin committed to reworking the DBR4 into the smaller and lighter DBR5 for the 1960 season. The DBR5 received engine modifications to increase power output and now featured all independent suspension. But the car was again uncompetitive. In fact, it made just one World Championship entry to the 1960 British Grand Prix, with drivers Roy Salvadori in car number 18 and Frenchman Maurice Trantignon in car number 19. Of course, this casting was placed at number 19 in the matchbox range and carried the number 19 decal, which is no coincidence, I'm sure. Salvadori retired with steering issues on lap 46, having started 13th, while Trantignon came home in 11th, five laps down on winner Jack Brabham, having qualified 21st. And that was to be it for the DBR5, as Aston scrapped both cars, hence why it's difficult to find a suitable image of the car. As such, Aston Martin pulled out of Formula 1 altogether to focus on their sports car projects. Aston had remained away from the Formula 1 grid for the last 61 years. That is until this year, when the Mark returns as a constructor for the 2021 season. The team is set to make their second F1 debut at the Australian Grand Prix on the 21st of March, if that still goes ahead in the current climate. So that was a brief dive into Aston Martin's very brief Formula 1 racing history, but it again raises questions as to why Lesney opted to cast the DBR5. Like some of their other casting choices, it was a left field decision, considering that this was a car that raced competitively just once in 1960, and was then released as a model in 1962. It may explain the 19C's relatively short lifespan, before it was replaced by another Formula 1 racer, the 19D Lotus in 1965. Prices don't necessarily reflect the possible rarity of this casting, with mint models not majorly sought after when they are adorned with Trantignant's number 19. However, if they carry the numbers 3, 5, 41 or 52 decals used on other models in the range, prices begin to skyrocket. 
Me though, I use the number 19 replicas, teamed with my reproduction driver in cast metal instead of plastic, head attached. I purchased both of these from model-supplies.co.uk and I shall leave a link to their website in the description. The 19C was released alongside the 73B Ferrari racing car, which shared the same white or grey driver and the same wire wheels with hubs. Now these reproduction decals are excellent. It is extremely similar to the font used originally by Lesney on a very slightly off-white roundel. Reproduction parts and decals can be very hit and miss for these Matchbox series models, but I am suitably impressed with the accuracy of both the decal and the driver. After rolling out the excess moisture from the left side decal, I speed through the right hand side. I opted to angle the number slightly, as had been the case on the remnants of the original earlier on. I imagine the Lesney employers were probably quite frivolous with their decal placement in the 60s. That said, it does have a cast raised circle to aid fitting the decals. Lastly, I apply some setting solution and roll out the moisture to complete this build. So let's remind ourselves of how our headless horsepower merchant looked when I found him. The green paintwork was patchy and had thinned all over. The axles had rusted up and the rear had bent a little. The decals were partially visible, but had most certainly seen better days. Thankfully, our decapitated driver Maurice Trantagnon had helped to secure the steering wheel in the cockpit. So now, I hope you think this casting is definitely better restored. Here it is, the 19C Aston Martin DBR5 coated in Tamiya's TS20 metallic green. The shade doesn't look a wonderful match to my original, but compared to most others I've seen online, it suits well. Like I said earlier, the number roundel decal looks amazing, great quality and a near perfect match to the factory look. My now die cast rather than plastic driver looks keener in grey, so much so that I've sat him further forward and more upright. I didn't remove the tyres from the wire wheels, but I have cleaned the individual pieces up and coated the black tyres in Citadel gloss. I also dabbed some chrome on those previously rusty axle ends. Please hit that subscribe button and leave a like if you enjoyed this restoration. Take a look at my Patreon for a preview of next week's casting and support if you can. That just leaves me to say thanks for watching and I'll see you again for the next one. Bye for now.